There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast, and I'm so excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio. By now a third time guest, the innumerable Dave Lee. Dave, what is up, my bro? I was just thinking before I came here, like how many people get to say they get to go on their favorite podcast three times? So I'm stoked. You're you're literally, bro, you're literally, I think, the second person. And indirectly, you're really the first because the third, the other third timer came on with someone else. So you're really the first time third person. So, and you're obviously very deserving. So for you guys that don't know who Dave is, Dave is a health coach specializing in men's hormone optimization therapy, but he's much more than that. He's a very close friend of mine and a very close friend of this show. And most importantly, a very close friend of all of you in this community, because Dave is a very advanced, enlightened, I would call him consciousness. And when I tell you guys that I use those words, I do not use those words lightly. Uh, when I first met Dave, what dude was it six years ago? Um, literally, I thought Dave was like my age. And he tells me, he's like, nah, bro, I'm like 25. I'm like, no, you're not. Your soul is like thousands of years old. So, I mean, this is a guy who is extremely advanced in his knowledge. I would call his knowings of all the things that this community is about. And so today we're literally going to do essentially part two of a podcast that him and I you know, just recently did, which a lot of people has watched. And obviously a lot of people watched the first podcast. And I know you've made a lot of friends from it because you just resonate with people at a very deep soul level. Uh, as I was telling you, you know, a guy in my inner circle was, you know, just literally asking me yesterday, he's like, dude, can you introduce me to Dave Lee? He's like, I really resonate with that guy. And I'm like, I'm going to do it, but let me ask him first. I told him, you know, we had this today, we were going to uh, be podcasting today. And for the record, <laughs> today is Thursday, August 17th. This podcast is going to be showing up very soon here on the Jay Campbell podcast, but bro, we're going to go in so many different directions. Um, why don't you right now just give a quick update on what's going on in your life and your business. I know you're like traveling the globe, but give us a little quick update on what's going on. Yeah. Thank you. It's um, that was such a nice introduction. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, things have been interesting for me. I'm back in Australia at the moment. I spent a few months in a uh, few months in Thailand back here for a couple of months in uh, in crazy land until I head back to uh, Eastern Europe this time, likely for good or a longer stint. Um, things have been going awesomely. I, I've had a couple of really interesting lectures that I've given at the Silverback Summit. Uh, part one is now fully available on YouTube and part two uh, is going up within the month, uh, awesome. which is a three-part lecture series that it's called the uh, Your Brain on Testosterone and the War on Masculinity. And this really covers a lot of what Jay and I speak about, which is the cross section between physical health and mental health. And that extrapolates out to everything to do with the physical vessel and then everything to do with consciousness and how these two things are interplayed and how a lot of the time we are lost or caught up looking at the wrong area and we can address things differently to get the results we want. So I'm giving part three of that. So I'm coming over to the US in November. And then the other thing that's very exciting is I've just launched uh, where we have by the time this podcast goes out, it will be officially launched uh, a new clinic in Australia called Primal Zone, uh, which is a clinic that I'm very proud to be uh, a part of directly, uh, to be able to offer my uh, insights and approaches to TRT uh, Australia-wide, which is extremely exciting. That's amazing. And for all of you guys that are listening to this, uh, who are my friends, fans, and family in Aussieville, and you said crazy land, I mean, USA is crazy land V2. Um Man, did you guys just hear that? You got an opportunity now to work with the best of the best, Mr. Lee here, and of course, whoever physicians that he has working with. And look, man, when people like Dave and I put ourselves behind a clinic, you guys know you're not going to get quacked. (laughs) You're not going to get screwed up. You're going to work with somebody that absolutely knows what they're doing. And again, you know, for you guys that don't know, I mean, I endorse Dave as, as positively as I can endorse anybody, including with all my doctors. I mean, he knows this stuff backwards and forwards. He's written books on this. Um, I mean, like I said, he intricately knows this probably as good as anybody on planet earth. 
Um, so that's an amazing sign and amazing information to know. So obviously, as you guys get closer to opening, you and I will do some more stuff and we'll we'll do a promotion for everybody that's over in Oz. Are you guys going to work with like people in like comp- uh, 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 contiguous countries too? I mean, can you guys do that from a telemedicine standpoint? I'm not sure on that because they're changing a whole bunch of the telemedicine stuff at the moment in Australia. Um, So by the time this goes out, it could be a completely different uh, kettle of fish, but we are networked up pretty well with other, uh, other providers all over. So if, if we can't do it, we can definitely put you in touch with someone. But anyone in Australia will be able to work with you guys. Anyone in Australia, 100%. And that, and that's what matters guys. Cause I know so many of you, and by the way, you guys going to work with women too, or is it mostly going to be for dudes? Just dudes at this stage. Okay. At this stage. Yeah, because I, would... I mean, obviously, you know, there's a huge market for both. The the interesting thing in Australia is that the that there's a really in, very, very interesting, as as you and I would find, a distinction between uh what are they calling it? Bioidentical uh hormone replacement therapy versus body identical bio <laughs> hormone replacement therapy. So people are convinced that the stuff that comes in the commercial preparations is the healthy stuff and the compounded stuff is going to kill you because the oh government my says God, dude. so negotiating that. Uh, that bullshit. It would basically be like only being able to do TRT with Testogel or Rhiandra. Right. Just like, right. yeah, right. fuck it. Or, or the uh, sipinate that they put in, um, what is it, cottonseed oil? Oh, man. We, I'm so, that's one thing we can do in Australia now as well. We can compound it MCT. Um, man, like, yeah, yeah, our, our typical preparation is that Prima test and stuff, which is the most viscous Horrible. bowel testosterone Can't preparation even in the world. It can't even inject it you need like a harpoon to inject it but dude i got something for you and maybe you guys can be the first ones to do this because i don't even know if you've even heard of this so one of my insiders has been compounding his own with carbon 60 in mct oil bro he's telling me it's absolutely unreal so there you go first time you probably heard of that use carbon 60 in mct oil with sipinate ananthate whatever it doesn't matter the ester and he's telling me that he feels literally unreal. I mean, and again, if you understand the, the, the metabolic cascade, the molecular dynamics of carbon 60, it would make sense that it would do all sorts of things, you know, from an oxidative ridding, a molecular sponge, uh, obviously enhancing mitochondrial power and density. I mean, it sounds a lot, um, it sounds like a science fiction project, but according to him using it, he's been doing it for three weeks now and he's raving about it. The guy messages me every day. He's like, bro, you got to get this out. You got to tell people to do this. So anyway, it's one of the very few things where it actually makes sense to compound it with something. Like I always compound in vitamin D with the transcrotal cream because it makes sense because it's better better to absorb it that way. But when people were putting in like injectable, you know, anastrozole, which is just fucking retarded, (laughs) but you know, putting in like you know, compounding in different things to go in in the injectable testosterone, it's like it makes no sense. But putting C sixty in does. Exactly. Yeah. And he's just saying too, from just, you know, if you use MCT, uh, an MCT infused carbon 60 and then put the testosterone, he's like, it's insane. Yeah. So there you go. Think about that. But something you just said that I want to, it'll just take us off on the divergent path. And I know it's not you guys listening because you wouldn't be here if you were these people, but bro, any person on this planet today who literally is still in the belief that the government is their friend or their ally or is actually designed to protect them is brain dead. Let's just be honest. You do not have a functional brain. Maybe it's been too many vaxes, too many boosters, you know, too much lead poisoning, too much, uh, what do you call it? Uh, poisoned water, fluoride in the water. I mean, bro, it's insane. I mean, do you, by the way, I, I don't know if I said this to you the last time we talked and this isn't something else that's laughable. I did my own thing in California when I had my daughters, not this past year, but the year before I interviewed 10 dentists in the San Diego area, local to where my house was in, in Marietta. And I asked them about the poison aspect or the poisonous aspect of fluoride. Do you realize that of the 10 dentists that I asked them about fluoride, not a single one of them had any idea that fluoride was bad for you. I swear to God in my life. I mean, it was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, these people are brainwashed from the fountain of youth, which obviously is direct in medical school before they choose, you know, whatever it is that their, their deal, dental school, whatever you want to call it. I mean, they don't have a clue. One thing that I found very startling on in this exactly the same regard, but from a different dimension was when I was uh, back at university doing my science uh, studies, 
when I would ask psychiatrists about the long term oh. side effects and how it like how SSRIs actually work, right? They didn't have any clue. Had absolutely no idea. They they didn't they couldn't mechanistically distinguish between what the different SSRIs did or even how they worked in the brain or most importantly what actually happens when you stop taking them or the fact that they don't work in the first place. But the thing that I, I found very startling and it was one of the reasons I dropped out of my studies in this field is that all of this stuff is th – these people are just trained to do these things because they're told to do them and they don't question why or how they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> And that was the part that that's one of the reasons I dropped out because I was like, I, this isn't how you heal the brain. This is how you enslave and, and, and poison entire world's mind. It was, it was truly mind blowing. Well, I mean, let's go deeper. I mean, like you said, they don't know because they're not designed to know they're the, the, what they know is how to sell the drugs and how to addict their patients. I mean, look, I just did a call last week with Rebecca Taylor Shaw is like one of the world's top trauma therapists. And her big deal now is unhooking people from psychiatric care because bro, as we know, talk, I mean, again, we could go really deep on psychiatry, but psychiatric care talk therapy actually reinforces trauma. Oh, it reinforces it. <laughs> so, 100%. I, mean, I, I am insane. so Oh, dude, I, I, I think that that's, it's, it's something that I speak about all the time. I'm, I'm very big on the idea of martial arts as therapy for men or martial yes. arts. I mean, it could be a fantastic therapy for women as well. I just don't yeah. happen to work with women. But yeah. you know, one, of, one of the things I, I speak to guys about all the time, they come to me and they go, well, which, which form of martial arts should I learn? And my general answer to anyone who's wondering is where, whichever discipline you can get the best coach in, learn sure. from there, learn yeah. from the masters. Yeah. But one of the most powerful things for, for rape trauma or sexual assault trauma is learning jujitsu. Yeah. Like if you, if you can put yourself back into a situation in a controlled environment where you are pinned down and then you can learn how to absolutely execute and terminate the attacker, that is therapy. That is that's, therapy. That's if trauma you, integration. That's literally trauma understand. integration because you're now overcoming physically the physiological molestation or, you know, event that essentially subjugated you Somatic. from a psychiatric perspective. Exactly. You, you're, you're having a somatic healing experience and it's the same with striking. Like for guys who are anxious and afraid just of right. the world right. because of how they've been programmed and conditioned. Like right. I tell them, I mean, like go, th go through 12 weeks of one-on-one of -on -one boxing training or Muay Thai right. training or some form of sparring. And what you go through in that experience, being physically pushed, being psychologically pushed, like all these different things, getting comfortable in going through in your dishing out violence and then walking out into the world just with the, uh, an idea that you could just kind of take care of yourself or you could maybe take someone who didn't know how to fight, that right. completely changes the way that you carry yourself through the world. And that is so much more effective for men than going for 12 weeks of talking about your feelings and then just feeling like you're completely fucking broken. It's ridiculous. Bro, I love you. You just made me laugh. I almost vomited in my mouth when you're saying you could take somebody that doesn't know how to fight. <laughs> it's most people. You can, you can be most people. Right. Simple. Oh. Twelve weeks of boxing. You, you can find those people. Though, the, the average person, if they're not listening intently, it's just amazing. It's awe inspiring. I mean, like that's awesome. But I mean, it's true though. I mean, and you know, you think of like all these aut. I mean, I don't like to use the word autistic. I don't want to like demean or anything. But let's just call them, you know, savants. We'll call them savants, right? Because like autistic people are incredibly cerebral. They have insane high functioning motor neurons, but they're obviously broken emotionally because of. I mean, look, let's just say it. We know why they got autism. Their parents gave them autism because their parents weren't conscious enough to realize that they could have said no, you know, or, or keep saying no, right? So, you know, without going any deeper, for those poor bastards that have autism, um, this is what they need, exactly what you said. They need martial arts training. They need to learn a physical discipline because let's just be honest, they can't play in team sports. Right. I mean, they're, they're not wired to play in team sports. It, it, it's the way it is. Right. So it's like nothing against them. It's just the way they are. But yeah, dude, they can absolutely learn one on one fighting combat skills. I mean, they give Tai Chi. I mean, I mean, something that can harness that masculine energy that, as you know, which we've talked about many times now, is literally from the top level of the dark side, call them the sons of Belial, are suppressing it. This is like an anti masculine energy form on this planet right now and they do not want strong masculinity they don't want it at all because it's a threat to the order of their control structure and they they've stigmatized men getting together 
as gay. So that's that's the exactly. that's the other best psyop against it is going, oh, you're a grown man and you like wrestling with your friends. That's gay. Oh, you like getting together and hanging out with your friends and you know talking about guy stuff. That's gay. It's like that's it's the ultimate psyop to to just the the dregs of what may remain in terms of a guy's psyche, and then just giving this below the belt insult to make him feel self conscious about things that are actually extremely important to his physical and mental health. I think is just such a shame, and it, it's been so effective. Um, because when I look at things like martial arts, it, it's the it's the grown up equivalent of of boys wrestling, which is right. them basically getting into that state and learning what their boundaries are and learning what happens when you do these things. Yeah. One of the most powerful things about learning martial arts is realizing that you don't know shit about fighting and getting hit sucks. Like the, the guys yeah, who I see out there picking fights, like I, I was a DJ in a nightclub for a few years. And I was, you know, stone cold sober. It completely got me off drinking. When you see drunk people, oh my God, never drink again. <laughs> but I, I want to talk I, about that. I want to talk about that. Not right now, but I want to talk about that. But keep going, keep going. Oh, man. But the thing that you see with, with people picking fights is the guy who, who starts the fight is always the guy who doesn't know how to fight. That's exactly right. Pummeled. That's like, exactly right. And men not learning respect for violence is the thing that causes them to have issues with violence That's later. Right. That's um, right. That's so right. it's such an important thing that guys learn and go through with their with their male friends. And I think that it, it's interesting that you brought up the word autistic because the, the 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 opposite word to autistic by definition is organic. Exactly. Autistic means inorganic. Right. So I think that one of the most powerful organic things for a man to do is learn and get comfortable with violence in terms of receiving it and giving it That's right. from a master who's done it before. That has how that is how all our male ancestors got through from the beginning right. of time up until now. Every literally. single man in your bloodline literally. did that, and now you can too. Bro, literally, and I, I want to go deeper on this, and I do want to get back to alcoholism too, and just alcohol itself, because you and I can really make a really resonant message about this. But, bro, you you and I know growing up, you know, the, 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 you, you hear the term old man strength, right? So when you're like a young man, you're an adolescent boy or a man, and you're – you know, guys like us were athletes. We played sports. We wrestled. We fought. We were on the streets, whatever. You would always one day, like for me, it was like I would be playing basketball. I was really good, but I'd be always playing with a lot of older guys. And I, this is, you know, I don't know if I've told you this story before. And if I have, I apologize. I don't think I've told you this, but I was literally 13 years old and I was playing against probably guys in there that were 20 and 20, 20 to 25. It was on open court. And this is in like upstate New York. I mean, almost every guy was either, you know, 20 plus and most of the guys were you know brothers and they were good and i was good right but i was 13 dude i literally blocked this guy's shot from behind right he was like 20 mid 20s black dude and as i turned to go run back up the court the guy literally was like bam i mean he hit me so hard this is how crazy it was didn't knock me out i'll say i didn't get knocked out but i went down i got up and i was like what the fuck and my buddy was there. His name was Mark Starcheski. I'll never forget. I don't know where this guy is, but like literally he was looking at me. He's like, bro, your mouth is all cut. He's like, we got to go. And so I was like, sorry, I subbed out. Somebody got me, picked me up. And I went home, dude. I had the guy's ring embedded in my gum line. He literally put his ring in my gum line. Right. So my mom's all freaking out. You know, whatever. I went to the doctor. They pulled it out. They gave me some stitches. Oh, well. Right. The point of that story is there is that doesn't happen today. We don't have our youth and our children and kids out on the street learning about old man strength, learning about like the, the again, the rite of passage, like respecting your elders. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I literally was just this 13 year old kid and I thought I was a tough guy or whatever. And I blocked this dude shot from behind. And he literally was like, motherfucker, I will teach you a lesson. And he did. And he put a ring in my, in my face, right. Or in my gum line. But it's like, that's not learned today. P people do not learn this. Kids are not out there fighting in the streets. You know, sure, in some places they're still playing football or basketball and some of these kind of things happen, but it's nothing like it used to be, bro. Nothing. It's so important to learn these, learn these lessons and learn these experiences. Like one thing that I found very interesting about living in, in Eastern Europe um, so I live in I live in uh, Lithuania. For those who don't know where it is, it's up in the Baltic states. And um, one thing I found very interesting in Lithuania is that if you're walking down a footpath that's big enough for two people, in, in Australia or I imagine in the U.S. or Canada, people will go to their side of the footpath so that both of you can cross. 
It doesn't happen in Lithuania. The people <laughs> people will not break their stride for you. So I I naturally had a bit of an issue with this. I was like, well, I'm bigger and scarier. So why aren't people breaking their stride for me? Like this this doesn't make any sense. And I, I was just sitting there being like, logically, I was like looking at myself and squaring up against these people. And I was like, why why are they not breaking right. their stride for right. me? And and my, my girlfriend just tells me, she goes, you, you don't want to find out if you don't break your stride for them because they like the, the people who woke up willing to die over this. Like, that's right. And she, she had this saying and it was it was a local saying, but it was like, you have to make room for stupid people or something, something along those lines. Right. right. And those are lessons that you learn in different parts of the world the hard way, unless you get to, you know, our level of wisdom and someone you, you you go hey what's going on with this yeah this is a bit different in this culture and instead of just applying your western logic to it and getting fucking stabbed over a footpath you can have someone go yeah a whole bunch of people found out the hard way and we can tell them what to do like that's that's different like that, that's stuff that it's like street smarts you have to learn from experience and i think the, one of the biggest issues coming up now is that a whole bunch of these you know 15 to 25 year old guys are not learning that level of street at smarts, all. but then extra yeah extrapolate it out over everything there's just no critical thinking or self-awareness or just perception of what's going on around them and it's it's leading them into a, a very one susceptible to programming state they become very gullible and very lost and two they tend to when, when they come to see me at least like when i get these guys most of the problems they have are self-inflicted from ignorance right. yeah right yeah no exactly exactly yeah I mean, and, and that, let's just put it this way. The rite of passage for a man is gone. There is, there is no, again, technology, you know, lack of kids playing out in nature, on the streets, learning these kind of things, you know, these concepts that you just learned as a young guy, you know, 20, 30 years ago are gone. It, 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 it's, 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 it's not that world anymore. And I'm not saying it's not better in that, you know, there's less violence, but obviously for men, we must channel our masculine energy. And as you said, we must learn to channel it correctly and correctly is getting your ass beat. And if it takes getting your ass beat multiple times, that's even better because then you even learn more respect on when not to start a fight or to create violence. Cause as you said, dude, like when you channel your masculine energy and you know, like when you have to get physical, you're not going to get physical in places that really don't require it. And as most people walk around today with obviously, and we can you know talk about this, which we always do, you know, a, a massive testosterone deficiency, a hormonal deficiency, um, you know, too much um, estrogenic body fat, highly inflamed, drinking too much alcohol, eating too much sugar. Um, these people have no way to channel it, bro. And they're just passive aggressive looking to start shit. I mean, this is the entire call it leftist, you know, and again, I don't want to bring politics into this, but whatever that is, where it's just like swoped the world woke, it's like swept the world and it's made all these people like have this false sense of security because they don't have anything to back it up other than the, just this perception that they do. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. One thing that I was speaking about the other day on, on this topic, on because I'm very big on this idea of a rite of passage, because I, I like I didn't realize, but having having my brain injury and then completing that with ayahuasca was my rite of passage. And like sure. looking back on it, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. But at the time, it completely brought me to my knees. And, I, and I'm very proud that I got through it. But one thing that I can say as someone who went through a real rite of passage is that one a rite of passage needs to you need to look death in the eye. You need you need to be right at that point where you're like. What, what, why is it worth not crossing over and giving up? What is it worth to hold on for to get through? And that can be a physical rite of passage, like pushing yourself to a limit. It can be things like, you know, vision quests. It can be, you know, there's all different ways that you can do it. But you have to get to the point where you are looking annihilation right in the that's eye right. and go, why not? And then that's why you're here. Like, that's where you find your purpose. And what I, I really believe that the world has always been difficult and i think the world is just as difficult today as it was you know back when we were surviving out in the wilderness but it's difficult yeah. in a very different way back then it was much harsher much more direct threats to you know, you know physical scarcity and all these things but now it's like there's there's psyops going on you have to be aware you have there's so many different things and yes a lot of our basic creature comforts are taken care of but at the same time, there's a whole bunch of new challenges that we don't have a fucking clue how to deal with because they're all new. So I yeah. like guys to look at this and go, let's assume that life is equally as hard as when we were evolving and living outside in the winter and having to light fires and hunt and kill. 
You need to go through the same level of rite of passage to be able to handle that shit, to be able to handle this world. Otherwise, this world is going to look all soft and fluffy on the outside, and you're going to think you're fine going through, and then life is going to bend you over and fuck the oblivion out of you if you're not ready. Well, I mean, yes, well said. And and let's just be honest, bro. I mean, you and I are preparing for the end. The end's coming. We're going to arc the show towards the end of how that looks and stuff like that. And, it, and it'll be a positive a positive outcome. But look, here's uh, here's how I would say it. Like, basically, most people today, I mean, again, with the obesity epidemic. By the way, I was going to ask you, like, in the Balkans, are there are there obese people at all or not at all? Not to anywhere near the extent that there are here. No. There are okay. some, but nowhere near. No. So do you do you liken this? And this is a really good this is a tangential thread, but do you liken the obesity epidemic to just the call it westernized, uh Nazi corporatized cre- uh control over all systems from food, from government? from uh you know entertainment i mean is that is that really what's caused giant people it's definitely the combination of all of the above um and i I think we like to look at things and go okay is it more this or more that but i like to look at the synergy of the two so if you combine for example the synergy of the diet and the lifestyle and the programming i think one of those three things wouldn't have caused this but i think the combination is a perfect storm and now in the West, and, and let's call Australia the West because they're just a microcosm of the U.S., U.K., Canada. Um, bro, obesity is seventy-three percent of people. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's that's the that's the BMI, right? So it's like you and I travel a lot. We go into airports, and all you have to do is just sit there, and people watch. And it's like, my God. And 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 look, man. Like I, I've said this before, but you're the guy that keeps talking about it. And I do want to get back to alcohol, but. Um, I have like massive compassion and sympathy, not sympathy, but empathy for obese people because my mom was obese. My mom died earlier this year and was suffering. And I'm grateful that she's, you know, no longer suffering. You know, obviously I miss her, but she was broken uh, physically. Uh, and, and again, just inflamed and, 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 and suffering. And I think it's important, Dave, for guys like you and I to really explain this to people. Cause again, you know, they don't understand the scientific aspect of it like we do, but when a person is obese, highly inflamed, lots of visceral body fat, bro, they're in a, uh, let's just call it a cytokine storm 24 seven. They physiologically are in pain. It's like a bunch of little tiny needles stabbing them at all times throughout the day. And I don't think people truly understand this. And so it's like, when you understand that so many people are in so much pain and suffering and literally physical, physiological anguish, which obviously leads to all the other things, um, it's crazy how little like we as a populace, especially people like us, you know, thought leaders in our space, don't talk about it. We shove these people to the side of the road. It's kind of like, you know, it's akin to like, you know, pushing the elders who are the masters of wisdom. And can offer us so much, you know, to the side. Now it's like push the fat people to the side. But like from a real spiritual woo-woo mumbo jumbo, and and it's not, but I say that for people to listen to this, fat people are taking on layers of trauma, literally layers of trauma. And that's literally what all the physical tissue that is on top of them. And if we could just like spend more time being empathetic, being compassionate, taking an, 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 an effort to literally help them to reason with them, to even just speak to them. And again, I'm not saying proselytize to fat people who are, you know, usually there because they've made some mistakes in their life. But it's, I'm telling you, man, like that's the largest percentage of the population right now. And those folks, they really, I don't like to use the word need, but that's probably the right term for it. They need people like us to become an ally for them because we can sit here all day and say the world's too fat and there's too much obesity and inflammation, but how do we get these people to realize that there is hope for them? This is such a good topic. Um, I'll, I'll quickly mention, I, I, I just filmed a, a combined, like a team masterclass with my friend Ali Gilbert called the Mind and Muscle Masterclass, where we specifically talk about this exact topic. So we only record that a couple of weeks ago. It's very fresh. Shout outs to Ali. What's up, Ali? 
Yeah, and I and I, I remember ver- vividly quoting in that podcast Jay Campbell: "Inflammation is the root cause of all disease." Um, and the the reason why this this topic is so close to home for me is that I work with so many people in this situation. I've also was as the same with you, family members in the same situation. And I have a tremendous amount of empathy and compassion for people who are overweight. What I think is disgusting is the level of acceptance that we have around it. Yes. And the the lack of, I, I really think that when we're approaching a, a topic that is difficult and sensitive, I think the only sensible way to address it is with critical thinking and compassion. And what people need to hear and what people that want to hear are two completely different things. And the, the, the biggest thing that I, I spoke about in this in this class is the idea that you cannot be mentally healthy if you are physically unhealthy because of the neurological and systemic effects exactly of the cytokine right. storm of being overweight. If your car needs a service and you keep driving it, you're going to make it worse. It's the right. same with the body. And the thing that sucks from a spiritual perspective for me as someone, I mean, so for those who don't know, I had a brain injury and had very severe vertigo uh, from, from one side of the inner ear, uh, which essentially gave me a broken vessel. Um, and one of the most, uh, disturbing things over the couple of years that I suffered with that was how my mental consciousness started to break as a result of being stuck in a broken vessel. Because when you are living in a broken vessel over time, your consciousness starts to be impacted by that to the point that I got to the solution of kill the vessel. That was the solution. And I'm very glad that I wasn't able to do that, but that's the point that I got to. So I, I understand full well living in a broken vessel and how much it sucks. And I think that the thing that's a shame is that We shame people for crashing the car when they weren't taught how to drive. And I think that that's the part that's that's a shame. It's like most of these people have destroyed their bodies and gotten off track because they didn't know better, because they ate what they were taught to do and they did what they were told. Um, And that that to me is heartbreaking because not, not everyone is at the level of consciousness where they can question everything around them. And it doesn't mean they're bad people. Um, And I, I think that it's a shame because these people have been led astray. And I think that, they can be cured and fixed, but there are so many, um, there, I was censoring my language, but then I was like, I'm on Jay's podcast. I can talk <laughs> um, there are so many cunts out there who are taking advantage of sick people to make money off them, to sell them bullshit. Exactly. And that's the thing that I think is a shame. And that's why I always direct people to, to your work, Jay, is because like your mechanistic, like understanding of what happens when someone is obese and how it fucks up everything systemically yes. in the body Basically, it, it shows people when it goes, if, if you're having any concerns mentally, any concerns physically, and they're things that are like idiopathic, lose the body fat first, and that will take the pressure off the rest of the system so the rest of your body can heal. I did not come from a six-pack on the beach background. I came from a neuropsychiatry standpoint, and this is what got me into this space in terms of being like, being 10 to 12 percent body fat is not about how good you look in summer on the beach it's how healthy you are exactly. all year exactly dude. exactly and and uh, what well, amazing i love you bro that was so so awesome i mean and my, look man every day of my life now you know i did a podcast yesterday with the guys at front row dads and you know that guy's amazing john broman i mean super super connected i i need to connect you with him you need to be on their podcast um what an amazing podcast but he said some very profound things to me. And he was like, one of the things was like, bro, you've said it all. Like, you know, you're like one of the OG biohackers. He's like, I don't even know how to even have a podcast with you. Cause like I can go so many different directions with you. And he's like, I don't want to like bring it up because I feel like you're probably gonna be like, this is fucking boring. Like, why are you asking me this? Who gives a fuck? And, and it was like one of the first people that ever brought that up to me in that way. And he asked me what continues to motivate me to do what I do, to continue to create content, to continue to interview amazing people like you to continue to do this. And honestly, bro, it literally is now to help overweight inflamed humans because it's the majority and guys like me and you, we, we have the solution. We, we know the answers. We literally can completely defrag the matrix from a standpoint of like getting these people help. And, and, and you know, something that you started to talk about and you actually started to talk about this on our last podcast, but we rabbit holed and talked about so many amazing things that we didn't go down and now we can seek to it. And I still do want to talk about alcohol because it's going to wake its way back into this. But bro, what you just said is in order for someone to truly have a body that is 10 to 12% body fat as a man or 15 to 20% as a woman year round, they have to love and trust themselves. And if you don't love and trust yourself, it doesn't matter what Dave or Jay or Allie or Dr. Nichols 
or Dr. Komenark or Dr. Meehan or Dr. Everwine or any doctor that we know that is amazing at what they do tells you, you are going to go back to the default pattern of I am worthless. I'm not worthy of making these changes. I'm not worthy of looking like Jay and Dave. I'm not worthy of eating a clean diet. I'm not worthy of using therapeutic testosterone and on and on it goes. And it's important for people like me and you to really get out in the front of this and champion this as more important than all the things that you and I know, right? And you and I know if we started adding shit up a lot more than most people. And that's a gift, but at the same time, nothing from a features and benefits and science standpoint, like I say in my newest book, which is coming out, which I'm going to send you a PDF of in the next day, 30 days to shreds. It's absolutely the greatest book ever written on fat loss. It is a scientific treatise on it. But I tell people in the very beginning, bro, it's got the cover, you know, the copyright information. And then there's a forward from one of the guys that made a transformation. There's a before and after you look at it. You're like, there's no way that's possible. And then there's the non-medical disclaimer. And it literally is, If you don't love and trust yourself, nothing I say in this book is going to mean jack shit. No amount of peptides, no amount of growth hormone, no amount of testosterone, no amount of training protocols, cardiovascular protocols, ab protocols, sleep protocols, red light, blah, blah. It doesn't matter, right? So like, you know, you and I can go much deeper on this now, but like people have to realize this is not woo, this is reality. We are literally nothing more than mind. Our thoughts create the reality that we exist in. You healed yourself because you said you were going to heal yourself. I did not kill myself because I think literally an angel or my higher self tapped me on the shoulder and said, jerk, you know, jerk your steering wheel to the side of the road. You got a lot more to do, bro. But the reality is, is like we as a human, as an individual control our vibration. That's all we control. After that, we have a choice, right? To respond out of love to things that happen to us or to react out of fear, which is what, you know, 80% of humanity does. So it's like at this point in this podcast right now, we're 36 minutes in, like it's time for you and I to go full blown woo dude. And like literally teach people that if you don't feel worthy, you're never going to make changes. 1000%. You cannot trust anyone in this world at the moment, other than the people who you really, really vetted. But if you can't trust yourself, you're fucked. Like if, if if you say I'm going to get up tomorrow at five and then you don't do it, you can't trust yourself and you're fucked. Like it's, it's so, it's so rudimentary, but it's like, you have, if you don't have your own back, then I don't have your back. Um, Cause then no one can trust you. So that's the number one thing is you have to keep your word to yourself And then everything from that, so this is why I love that you said love and trust yourself, because one, you actually have to keep your word to yourself, and then you'll keep your word to other people, and then you can actually have healthy relationships, which is extremely important and becoming even more and more um, shunned from the importance of society lately, which I think is also part of the style. Um, of course, but the, the thing at the moment that I think is, is really important that what, what I'm trying to do more of, and what I know that Jay does a lot of, um, I actually adopted, um, I remember, I don't know if you still do this. I assume that you do, but I remember I used to see that you would give your book for free to people if they emailed oh, yeah. you and asked for it. I, oh, yeah. That's exactly what I do. I'm like, I would love if you bought my book, but I'll still give it to you if you want it. Exactly. Um, because we're at the point now where I, I am so like I, in, in marketing, we have this saying, which is like, you can lead the horse to the water. You can't make a drink, which means exactly. you can't make someone buy something, but you can put them to an outcome. Health is the same. So I am so past trying to make the horses drink. And I know that Jay is so like, you can take your aromatase inhibitor if you want. Like you're a dumbass, like go for it. Like d- I doesn't impact how I sleep because we, we gave you everything. We led you to the water. We gave you all the information. You're a big boy. You can make informed consent. So what I'm trying to do now, and I know what Jay is trying to do is how many horses can we lead to the water? Because that's where our efforts are best focused. Cause if we can lead more horses to the water and educate them on why they should drink it, then that's on them. And then that's their journey and what they need to learn. And I think that, you're completely correct. If, if people don't love and trust themselves what, in, in this lecture that's going up in, in a month, and which would be my part two on your brain on testosterone, war of masculinity. One thing is I really speak to the individual people. So it's not sciencey. It's not big words. It's literally t- teaching people to say, stop doing the shit that you know that you shouldn't be doing right. and start doing the shit that you know that you should be doing because, and I, I really, it's exactly what you said. 
people know exactly how to look after other people. Right. People are way better at looking right, after bro. other people than themselves. That's right. And they're bro. not good at looking after themselves because they don't think they're worthy of the love that they give to other people. Yeah. And some people actually aren't because they are pieces of shit. That's right. But so the first thing that you have to do is that you have to be someone who you're actually proud to be. That's and right. the way that you start doing that is you just do the right thing. I think right. people at least have a genuine understanding of whether it's the 10 commandments or a basic moral compass, just do the right thing and start there. And then if you do the right thing and keep the word to yourself, then you'll actually be able to start with some actual character and compassion around what you're doing for yourself and others. And then you can start to progress forward. But I think so many people get attached to the outcome. I think so many people get distracted and diverted by hedonism. Um, and I think that it's at the point now where people actually have to take a step back and go, Hey, I need to make sure that all my hobbies, all the things I'm doing in my free time are geared towards self-development, not self-destruction. And if people can just swap their self-destructive shit for self-development shit, that's like you're, you're so many points. Like you're taking away the bad and you're swapping it for good. That's a huge shift. And I think that if people can start to go, I actually have the potential to be the person the, to be the version of me that is on par with the people who I look up to. Meaning that if you look up to Dwayne Johnson and David Goggins, <laughs> you might never be a big black Samoan. That's fine. But you can be your version of David Goggins and you can be your version of like, you can, you can do those things in, in being your version of that. Yeah. And I think so many times people look at their potential and look at the best versions of themselves and they go, I couldn't be that because they've been conditioned and programmed to right. think that they can't. They think that because they wake up feeling sad that their brain was broken and then now because they're sad, they, they need to find the perfect SSRI to fit their brain chemistry and then they'll finally be happy. And people have just been brainwashed to think that if they buy this or if they do that or if they follow this trend, then they'll get what they're looking for. But what they really need to do to start is to be proud of themselves and to be proud of the person that they're showing up in the world as. And then that's when, as Jay talks about, that's when your vibrational frequency raises because what he's, what he's talking about there is just quant quantum mechanics. It's energy. So if, if you, and, and this is a, a great example is I don't read YouTube comments because I'm, I no. actually have productive things to do with my life. But if I did, <laughs> and I read some degenerate troll who spends his free time saying negative shit about people who are trying to help other people, on exactly. the internet, which is just fucking retarded. If I read that and it was something that, you know, made me angry and I'm sitting there being like, oh, I'm going to respond to this guy. I just embodied all that ne negativity that's from right. him yeah. for hours, like hours right. after that interaction. Sure. And sure. that's the thing that people need to be so conscious of is like, be aware of what is bringing your negative vibrational field down and you need to protect it. Like I have an that's assistant exactly right. that filters the world out for me so that I don't have to deal with so much bullshit. Like I really protect my energy. I really protect my vibrational frequency because that's how I can serve other people. Like that's how I can show up as my highest version of myself. So if you're doing things consistently that bring your vibrational field down, these are things, and what brings your vibrational down, what brings your vibrational field down as Jay has highlighted for years now is chronic inflammation that is the yes. physical thing that's fucking with the vibrational frequency of your body it's that's like right. throwing a throwing a spanner in all these cogs that's making your your energy of who you are and your consciousness is every single cell in your body communicating at once so the first thing that you can do is fix the physical vessel fix the thoughts and start working towards being someone you're proud of and that's how you raise your frequency and then others around you you bring them up with you and that's we can't save the world, but I really believe in being the change that we seek in the world because that way I can sit back and go, hey, if everyone just did what I did, we wouldn't be in this fucking mess. Bro, amazing, man. That was profound stuff. I mean, I want to share this right now on the screen. So, I, you know, because like I'm so, dude, that was amazing, bro. I mean, I, I, a couple things I want to share. So, I mean, you said so much, but let me just share uh, this tweet I put up the other day on Twitter and it's, it's an affirmation. So it goes back to literally exactly everything that you just said. So I, 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 you know, this is the kind of stuff I put on social media now, bro, because like, like you said, I mean, it's just all negative, mostly negative programming, but I say, I strongly recommend this affirmation as part of your daily contemplative practice. Say I am healthy. I am open to change. I am loving, trusting and healing myself. I am healing the patterns of misplaced intent in my bloodline. 
I am optimizing my energy field, which you just said like 50 times. I'm releasing all confusion and fear, which is 90% of society. I'm feeling tremendous gratitude for all that I know, for the joy of remembering and the courage to heal. And I'm healing all my relations on all the lines of time. Now, you mentioned quantum mechanics. You know, you talked about where we really are. Like, <clears throat> there are many versions of you and me, as you know, and there are many permutations of the ways that things can happen from a frequency standpoint. So it's like, <clears throat> if you affirm every single morning when you wake up and you can do it five times a day, you can program it in your, ca in your calendar or your phone or whatever it is, you know, whatever your little ritual, hopefully you have a contemplative, you know, introspective ritual, you meditate, whatever. But if you just do that every day, bro, and you use those exact affirmations and you don't even have to speak them, you can just think them right into the universe. All of those things are possible. And you literally create that reality. And again, I know you know this, but it's like very important for people to understand this. And obviously for you and I to meet them where they are. And that is, it doesn't matter where you find yourself right now. You literally can change your reality with a thought. Sick, diseased, obese, unhealthy, inflamed, change your mind, change your thoughts. I want to give you this too. <clears throat> so I'm reading these amazing books from Barbara Marciniak, written, of course, in the 80s and 90s. I mean, as you know, bro, there's so many ciphers, you know. And she says, whatever it is that you do in your inner work, this is your thought. You, this should be your thought pattern every single day. Think of how profound this is. With every in-breath, so this could be in an affirmation. This could be just you sitting in stillness in nature. But with each in-breath, send this message to the universe and to your body that you desire to convey inner strength, safety, clarity of mind, protection, fortitude, healing, patience, love, understanding, compassion, and right action. Now those, those adjectives, let's just call them adjectives. If you focus on those adjectives in every endeavor that you do, and we know we're human, we're frail, we make mistakes, our ego gets, you know, is designed to protect us and throw us into survival at times, and that's okay. But if you can focus on those adjectives, and I'm going to obviously put all those words in the message of this podcast when my team transcribes it and stuff like that, you cannot have a bad life. Because Dave, as you know, if your thought, if all we are is thoughts, if we really are literally aspects of the divine mind, why would you think negatively? Why would you think you're not worth something? Why would you, like you said, I mean, yes, we've been conditioned to be worthless. We've been told that we're worthless. Religion teaches us that, you know, salvation comes after here, you know, and that you can pay to be rewarded in quote unquote heaven. I mean, we know that all of these things are tricks and ruses. And yes, there are great teachings found in all religions and spiritual precepts that are real. But again, it takes, as I always say, a pure heart to discern the truth. And most people don't have pure hearts because at the end of the day, it goes back to exactly what we've already said. Both of us, they don't love and trust themselves. And until bro, you said something too, that like really triggered me. When I talk to men now, I literally, the first conversation I have to them, you know, cause they want to get to where they want to go. And I, you know, I attract a lot of very high net worth people now. And so when I speak to them and a lot of these guys are very successful, but as you know, they're not healthy. You know, some of them are, but not all of them are, but I have to say to them at the very beginning, I'm like at the very beginning of, you know, it's usually a zoom call. Um, sometimes it's a, a FaceTime call or whatever. Sometimes it's in person rarely, but sometimes it is. Um, I have to say to them immediately, look them directly in the eye and say, look, before we go anywhere, I got to know, do you love and trust yourself? And 95% of men, literally back up or give you that look of like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? You know, I, I, I want to find out about peptides or hormones or blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, and that's usually the response. If I don't get a, a look of chagrin and I'm like, look, man, if you don't love yourself and trust yourself, I cannot help you. I can help you get to that place. If you're willing to understand that that is most important. But it's like a lot of these guys like, nah, man, that's not for me, you know? So it's like, like I told you, like in the very beginning of 30 days to shreds, I have that whole thing. It's right there. I don't want anyone to purchase my book that doesn't read that and say, wow, you know what I mean? Like, 
I, I want to work on that. Give me more, right? The, the person that throws that book away and says, what kind of woo-woo nonsense is this? I don't want them purchasing my book because they're not ready for it. And again, it's not judgment or condemnation. It's just where we are in the world right now. Like if you don't understand the importance of you, like what you said, valuing yourself, of placing yourself first. And as you know, Dave, most men never do that. It's their wife, it's their kids, it's their job. It's all these things that are not central to them becoming an empowered being. And it's like until they realize that putting themselves first is first and foremost in this life, in any lifetime, they are not going to ever be able to love and trust others because, bro, they can't do it for themselves. I mean, think about what they do in the planes, right? Again, we're always given t- t- uh, hints. Don't put the oxygen mask on your kids or your wife, because if you don't put it on your own face, you can't do shit for anybody, right? So it's like, this is like the crux of loving and trusting yourself. Take care of self first, because self is the access point to divinity. If we would but learn to understand that, right? Like the higher self, you know, the Christ of your own consciousness, the Christ conscious, whatever you want to call it, you know, some people call it the divine ego. That is our connection point to all that is source consciousness. And it's like, if you don't have a connection to that because you don't love and trust yourself. And let's be honest, if you don't love and trust yourself, you don't have a connection to it. You're not sitting in meditation. Everyone who meditates regularly has a profound love and trust of themselves because they feel confident enough to sit there in stillness without any concern what other people think of them. And when you do that regularly, you obviously kill shame. I know you're a guy that has absolutely zero shame. I have zero shame. I don't give a shit. You know, you have to get to that place where it's like what people say or what people do, again, towards you antagonistically means nothing. But when you love and trust yourself, it doesn't mean anything because you know that it's all right. It's not disempowering me. It's not stopping me in my mission. But so many people, again, and this happens to people obviously that are sick and diseased and ill and obese and all this, they get so caught up in the realization that like other people mean something and their thoughts and their words and their judgments and all the condemnations and stuff are important that they lose focus that all that matters is loving and trusting themselves. Because again, dude, as you know, when you love and trust yourself, there's no roadblocks. Nothing will stop you. It's awesome that you're speaking about this. And and for my guys who are listening, who I've, who I've sent over after this podcast got released, it was only a few days prior where I was speaking about this very similar topic, but in different words. And I was talking about how validation is supposed to come from within, not externally. Exactly. And that that's where you have to have that validation because what other people think about you, I mean, yeah, you have to be self-aware of other people and be a compassionate, good person to, to the world, but your value and, and, and your worth doesn't come from endorsements of people who you likely don't even have the same values of. I mean, you, you want to focus on the people who you respect, but most, most people, I, I really believe these days, their opinions aren't worth very much because they're not conscious to begin with. So I think people really need to be looking at what, you know, be, as I often say, being proud of themselves. But it's, it's interesting that you bring this up around when you were speaking about the affirmations before. And for anyone who, who doubts Jay's sincerity, I, I could pull up my messages from him. They are full of affirmations. I mean, he is affirming all the time. And those affirmations are so important. And, and the reason why I can say that they're important objectively is before I did this work, I was working for an organization which was teaching mindfulness meditation from an, a, a secular objective standpoint. So we were looking at the research and we were teaching meditation as a, as a tool to help children focus and regulate their emotions. So we were teaching it to the parents and teachers to teach the children. And the best way to teach people is for them to experience it. So right. we would put everyone into like a short, just you know, introductory guided meditation. And right at the end, I would tell everyone and I'd say, before you open your eyes, I want you to think of one thing that you're grateful for but I don't want you to just think of it. I want you to visualize it. I want you to feel it. I want you to be there. I want you to analyze it. And I want you to experience that gratitude. I want you to let yourself smile if, if, if you feel like smiling. And then I told them to open their eyes. And I every single time I said, did the energy in the room change? And everyone said yes. And we would always do that before a break. And that was where the people who were on the edge came over. They were like, that was significant. And we 
we know when we look at the research that even just power posing, which is like doing the Superman pose, just for 30 seconds massively increases testosterone and dopamine and massively reduces cortisol. So what we need to understand is the relationship between the mind and the body and the body and the mind. And one of the, one of the best things that we can do is learn to control our mind in a way that our mind becomes our ally, not yeah. our worst enemy. Right. And I think one of the things that's so sad, which is, you know, one of the things that I learned from you in, in combination with my, with my meditative practices is that if you've got all this systemic inflammation, you can't be at peace. No. As Paul Cech would say, your body is in the way of your really? conscious experience and you have to get your body out of the way. Otherwise, you, and neurologically, because of this cytokine storm, you actually can't get that peace to actually be able to meditate and be with source right. or be with the creator and actually be in that space because your body is sending you a signal going, motherfucker, I'm on fire. Like, there's a dumpster <laughs> fire in here. Put it out. That's what you're hearing when you're trying to sit and be with yourself because your body is sending you that message. And I think a lot of the time people realize that and they know that they need to get better and they don't and they're so far off track that they don't do anything about it and then they become guilty and it just gets worse because then they start to realize that they're causing their own problems. And I think that that can be the part where, again, it always comes down to compassion and it always comes back to, and this is one of the reasons I love, you know, communities like ours is it's full of people who are like, you know, people are off track and then they get on the track and then they start moving forward towards their goal. And this community is full of people who are also getting themselves on track, being like, hey, bro, it's all good. We are where you are. Come along. We'll help you along the right. way. And I think that that's the thing that we we have to continue to build and foster in this space. And, and that's one of the things that you know, I love what you do and, and what so many other people here are doing is being like, again, how many horses can we lead to the water? How many guys can we show and be like, this is how we get back on track? And yeah, I think that this whole discussion around the, the different ways of looking because what you're talking about in terms of being like do you love and trust yourself i always ask and it's what paul check taught me yeah. is you have to ask them do you have a purpose for getting better that's right and if you because if you don't have a purpose okay. you're not going to do the work you're, you're not you're not you think you are but when it comes to the point where it's difficult you're going to do the same shit that got you here in the first place that's right um that's right that's right and and Paul Cech said it, he goes, you know, there's two factors whether someone will get better, how sick they are and if they have a purpose. And That's if right. someone's only a little bit sick but doesn't have a purpose, they won't get better. If someone's very sick but has a very strong purpose, they'll get better. That's exactly, um, exactly right. So it's 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 so important when we understand the connection between – I think a huge part of this, I know Jay will agree, is that like you heal the body – but then you also have to heal the trauma of the mind being in the broken body and undoing all those thought processes and actually healing the consciousness. And I think people think the consciousness will self heal. If you heal the vessel, it doesn't, it just creates an environment that you can heal the consciousness. And then you have to do that work. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I mean, uh, it's not much more to say beyond that. I, I do want to cover alcohol. Um, I want to cover testosterone boosters. I want to call out people, bro. I think you and I, at this point in the matrix where, you know, the, the, oh, let's just call it the unravel of the third dimension. Like we need to call people out, bro. Like we have a responsibility and, you know, let, let's just make alcohol the end, but let's just talk about testosterone boosters right now for a second, because you and I know that it's now worse than ever. There are so many people out there promoting turkesterone, Tonkat Ali, Fagadocious. I love that word, right? That's another word that means what it says. <laughs> it's literally insane that there are young people being influenced, you know, by, let's just call them marketers, you know, I mean, we could call them con men if you really want to go deep. And I, 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 again, we can call people out, but dude, this reliance on listening to people who have science backgrounds who scream that it's about the science that, you know, it's about, you know, uh, empirical data and peer review and studies. I mean, you and I both know, I and mean, we've talked about this before, but I mean, like none of that means Jack fucking shit science jamming up your ass. I call them schmientists, right? Like get the fuck out of here. Dr. Anthony J proved in his landmark book, Estro Generation, that all peer review is literally pay for play. It is a fucking scam. There has never, ever been in the history of peer review or published research a single study that could be replicated. Did you guys hear what I just said? Yet you people continue to bow down 
from these clowns that go out there and say, at the Huberman lab, we use science. I, it is literally the most mind blowing nonsense that I have ever heard in my life. Like if you guys are out there still listening to people who talk about things that they don't even use, who, who, who give you statements of like, you could take a cold shower and increase your growth hormone 500 times or something. I mean, I don't even know I'm paraphrasing. Cause I go, obviously I don't listen to these people. You know, people come to me and they send me messages and send me screenshots. And you know, every now and then I read an email that gets to me through my assistants and say, you need to read this cause it's hilarious of these outrageous claims, Dave. And Dude, it's, it's time for us to just, you know, set the record straight. And, you know, obviously this is nothing that you haven't, I haven't been saying for a decade, but if you guys want to optimize your hormones, there's one way to do it. And that literally is to use therapeutic testosterone. I don't care what anyone tells you. I don't care about the f- fake and bogus science that these companies will pay for and publish. I don't care that, you know, a study shows tribulus terrestris or phagodosia or turkesterone, you know, raised free testosterone, 4X or 6X. As you know, Dave, any of those things, any one of those studies is a transient increase. It's not an increase that actually will optimize a person's hormones over time. This is literally insanity at this point, bro. There are so many young people They're still buying these products. And look, it's not just young people. It's older adults who should know better, who are emptying their pockets. And it's like last night on the doctor's roundtable, Keith literally said, if you actually, and again, you know, we've said this and you and I, I think covered this in our very first podcast. If you actually uh, counted what it would cost you to use therapeutic testosterone and, you know, obviously our recommended delivery systems, it's literally cheaper than buying testosterone boosters. So, I mean, like the madness of this at this point is, again, reflective of society at large. Google is dumbing down the collective IQ of the masses of everyone because of screens, false information, fact checkers, you know, the whole negative movement of wokeism. I mean, all of this stuff is literally lessening human intellect. And what I'm seeing now at this point, bro, is it's, it's mind numbing that people are still doing this stuff. And, you know, we could bring up SARMs and just classify them inside testosterone boosters because I don't really like doing that because I do know SARMs do produce an anabolic effect and you can get, a, you know, a, uh, an enhanced effect using them. But as you and I know, they also destroy biomarkers. They're absolutely horrific. So there's no value in using them, but really just the natural stuff is really what I'm talking about because you and I both know, and again, we talked about this on the show last night, bro, they, they're not regulated. We have no idea what's in the products. The majority of men, and they've come to you and they've come to me who use these things who are, you know, honest and integral enough to admit it will say to you, well, I didn't get any benefit from it, but I lost hair. My hair fell out. Or, or something along those lines, right? Like I literally lost sexual function. I mean, it's unreal that people are still falling for this snake oil, bro. And so I felt like, you know what? Just drop this bomb in the middle of this podcast and let's just be really honest and tell people that this stuff has got to end. And if you guys are afraid of using therapeutic testosterone, then by all re- me- means, don't use the other stuff because you're literally throwing your money in the toilet. Hundred um, percent. I know that you were one of the first people that pointed out that Tongar Ali is likely a phytoandrogen, which is what I also believe in terms of the in terms of the data based on the fact that it increases testosterone, but it doesn't increase luteinizing hormones. Where the <laughs> fuck does it come from? Um, there's there's and it, it, you you can look at the data specifically on that. So. Yeah, look, firstly, to touch on Psalms, like I'm at the point with Psalms where like I, I think Psalms as a concept, if they get it right in the future, there'll be huge applications for, for it. Sure. Potentially, if they get it right, like get rid of the toxicity and actually make a good one, that could be one of our best line of Definitely. defenses against uh, xenoestrogens, potentially, right? Definitely. Um, but at the moment, they're not there, so people shouldn't fuck with them. Um, so look, when it comes to these test boosters, if any of them actually worked, 
they would just cause your free testosterone and, and increased estradiol to have feedback at the hypothalamus and then your your levels would drop to make room for it. So exactly. if they actually worked, your body would just regulate its own production. Kind of like boron, like boron will increase free testosterone and then your body will just get used to it. Exactly. So like, I saw I saw a guy the other day who like, you know, he, he'd done all this stuff before he came to see me. It wasn't under my guidance, but he had low testosterone and his doctor put him on pregnenolone and DHEA, which increased his total by like, um, you know, 400, 500 points massively. But his SHBG tripled sure. like his free didn't move. Exactly. Um, so if you do, if these if these products actually worked by just increasing free testosterone for no reason then your body would just make room for it and regulate homeostasis. Like your body has a thermostat. Um, so it wouldn't work. And then the problem is that like the only supplement that has been shown to affect drone is only in stressed individuals and it's KSM 66 ashwagandha. Um, that, that's got a study where it actually does increase it because it's, it by the way, it's in the testosterone drone, optimization but, therapy Bible cortisol is suppressed and ashwagandha is a beneficial supplement. Absolutely. 100%. It, yeah. I mean, I got onto it from Christopher Walker and then I saw that it was, it was a part of your stack for a while, particularly, I, I believe you were using it when you were fasting more to offset the increased cortisol from it's fasting amazing, to sleep. It's amazing to take uh, a quality out and, and see that that's where we have to get really specific here. We got to make sure that we quantify that you got to get the right quality of supplement, right? Because most stuff on the market is literally fake. If, if, not butchered and adulterated and mm. not real. But yes, cortisol is massively suppressed with ashwagandha. Uh, and if you take it 45 minutes to an hour before you go to bed, you're going to get deeper sleep. And obviously, dude, look, I mean, again, I don't want to make this podcast about sleep, but if a person can sleep undisrupted for six hours a night, and I know that's harder for mm. older men, right? Because we have BPH and we have to usually wake up to take a piss. And here's the other thing. If you're hydrated, right? You're going to wake up in the middle of the night when you're 50 or older to take a piss. That's literally how it goes with a prostate. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you have uh, prostate cat cancer or the early onset of it. You just have a, 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 an increasing uh, prostate as you get older and drinking water, hydrating your body, which is very, very important, is going to make you take a piss. But the reality, bro, is like if people could just sleep undisrupted or, you know, totally, uh, uh, centered for six hours, right. Uh, poly polyphasic sleep, th dude, they're all going to have higher levels of testosterone, higher levels of free testosterone, better metabolic regulation. But we yep. know that we live in a society where it's very difficult for that. If you're in a very large city and you're being bombarded by EMFs, it's mm. difficult to sleep undisturbed anymore. So obviously the next best thing is to sleep three or four hours in a row and another three hours in a row you know, or two and a half hours a row, again, undisturbed. And that's where it's hard. And so cortisol suppression from an ashwagandha and there's other stuff too. It's great. Mel high dose melatonin. Oh, I love high dose melatonin. And and for those, for those who are, I'll, I'll throw in a quick, quick little tip here for people listening. I always recommend, and I actually got this from, from Keith listening to one of your podcasts, pharmaceutical melatonin shits yes. all over the melatonin you buy on the yes. internet. Like if, if anyone says it doesn't try it, but if you are buying it from the internet, you can get one called microactive melatonin, which yeah. is micronized melatonin. That is almost pharmaceutical grade. And if you try that, it is a naturally sustained, sustained release product that doesn't make you groggy in the morning. So that's a quick little tidbit. Great product there. But one day, Jay, you and I will go through, I will show you the, the data on melatonin and the 5-HT2 receptor. Some people are afraid of how it modulates serotonin. Yeah. That study... They use 5-MeO-DMT as the control compound, and then they measure how much they shake from being cold. It's right. hilarious. We'll, we'll have a right. read of the study. It's a fucking joke. But the um, going back to Fedoja and Tongat Ali, the, the thing with Fedoja and the reason why, like, I'm usually someone who just sits here and go, you know, people can do whatever they want and you know, whatever. <laughs> but, but when it comes to Fedoja, people really need to understand one thing is that Fedosia agrestis will never be studied in humans because it failed the rat study for exactly. toxicity. It would be illegal to study it in humans. So why right. the fuck are you taking it? Insane, bro. And, and why are you taking random shit on the internet that's never been studied in humans to increase your testosterone when you could just fucking take testosterone? It's like HCG monotherapy. Right. Right. Why are you injecting a shorter half-life, not shelf-stable, peptide extracted from uh, female or pregnant females to inject into your body to try to make more testosterone when you could just like maybe do that if testosterone is not available. 
but testosterone is available. So use the testosterone, like use the thing that you're going to all these crazy experimental measures, which have never been studied long-term to do this and just take the real thing. And that's the thing that people need to understand is that, and, and this is, this is why I love your work so much is like, and all the doctors that you have on is look at the people who aren't selling shit. So don't look at what the clinics who are making a markup on the medications are saying you need to take, because they'll tell you to take your know, N-clomiphene, HCG, and an AI or whatever they can make the most profit margins on. Look at the people who, what the people are promoting who aren't attached to the bottom line of your prescription. What are they recommending? And it's generally testosterone monotherapy plus if you need it, anything else that you may be deficient in. And that could be thyroid, pregnenolone, yeah. DHEA, melatonin. You could yeah. need metformin. You could need telmosartan. There's so many different things that you might need at the time, but they're not things that you need by default. It's testosterone. That's what you have a deficiency in. That's what you take. And then anything else is individualized. And the people who are telling you to take their crap instead of testosterone are making more money off you than the people who are selling the testosterone. That's literally so, absolutely true. Yeah, and let's be right. honest too. I mean, again, I, I could name names. But none of these people that have the physiques that we're talking about are doing it from their Turkestra. <laughs> I mean, everyone they, who's on the, everyone who's promoting those compounds is on TRT. Exactly. Like, or, or, or worse. And, and, and it's like, you know, and I don't want to say worse, meaning bad. They're just on other things, you know, and, and, and look, the reality is, like you said, bro, no judgment. You know, as P. Diddy said, don't hate the player, hate the game. The game is corrupted on this planet, dude. And, you know, we tend to reward people that, again, hide behind the annals and the bastion of science. Like science is the new religion. Science is what people should listen to. And look, man, like, great. You know, find some, you know, uh, peer-reviewed science to back up what your claims are or whatever. That's fine. If you want to do that, you want to go down that path. But again, I've already said it. I'll state it every single one of my books. It's at the very beginning of the book. Peer review has no meaning in your individual life. You are a biochemically unique organism. You are an N of one human and it doesn't matter what Dave and Jay takes. It might not work for you. You know, I've said very much. And again, I'm, we can talk about melatonin. I'm a huge melatonin proponent, but I'm one of those guys that the higher the dose of melatonin I take, and by the way, it does all sorts of amazing things for me, the more I'm awake. So I'm just one of those outlier people. And all people um, are, there's, I mean, not all people, a lot of people are outliers in certain things. You know, you're talking about 5-MeO DHT. I mean, I can take a dose of 5-MeO DHT that would most, that would split most people psychologically. It would literally destroy them. They would come back altered and probably never be able to be a functional human being. And that I know that because of the shaman that I work with, you know, he's given me dosages of it and he's like, dude, I've never seen anything like this. So it's like, you know, some of us can handle certain things. And I've always been a person that can handle pretty much heroic doses of most drugs, you know, recreational drugs, uh, obviously, you know, biohacking drugs, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I've never used massive doses of testosterone. I mean, I have you know, close friends that have, I mean, I know what happens to the, the CNS, you know, when you're on four to five grams of testosterone a week, I mean, you can't sleep. You're a fucking cyborg. You know what I mean? But it's like, at the end of the day, all of us respond differently to different things. And as you said, if you want to optimize your hormones in a world that you are being de a decontaminated world. But I mean, I'm sorry, a totally contaminated world, right? And you want to live at the highest and best that you can, you know, at, at really as a man or a woman, you have to optimize your hormones at this point. There isn't even a secondary thought. Like if you don't optimize your hormones, you are up against it, Dave. I mean, you are literally playing the half a deck. That's I, I couldn't agree more. And like, I, I wish it wasn't that case. Like the thing that the thing that I think is a really big myth, and I mean, I started testosterone at 25, so I'm a, I'm a very big advocate for this and working with the younger guys. It is very difficult to work with the younger guys because they don't have the maturity to follow direction properly, but a lot of them need it. And that's the part that's very difficult. And that's the part that people don't understand is that people will say, oh, if you're young, you know, you just need to, you know, look after your habits and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you've seen them as well. Like you get the, the ultimate biohacker extraordinaires who are doing everything right times a billion. And their testosterone levels still suck because they've just been poisoned from from their previous generations. I mean, That's just right. grew up endocrine disrupted to shit. And this is what we're getting. And um, that it, it's so important for these younger guys to go, hey, like this, 
this is something that you may need to intervene with. And this was just the hand that you were dealt. And the, and in those situations, the sooner they can do it, the sooner they, the, 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 the more damage they can prevent being done to their psyche and their body. The thing yeah. that's the most harmful thing is these younger guys. And this is what I see. And this is what I lecture on a lot at, at the moment is what happens to the psyche of the, and the identity of these younger men who are growing up without the surge of androgens, which they're meant to get during development. They're not risk taking. They're not that's brave. Right. They're not courageous. They're terrified of everything. So that they're, they're not going out and going, what mark can I leave on the world? They're completely right. pacified. And right. then they're, but they're having the sentient experience of that. So they know something's wrong with them. And then they think the solution is to probably chop the dick off and become a girl. Well, I, was, I, I um, literally, I'm glad you said that. Cause I was literally going to tell you that, that they go to the internet yep. and they think that they were born a woman. Yep. And that's, or, it's the ultimate satanic psyop. Exactly. They're, they're yep. literally told that, no, it's okay. You're like us, which is, yeah. you know, it's okay to become this poly glotted morphized, you know, non human. I mean, again, non male, non female, you know, I mean, I don't even want to get into that because I don't want to give it support, but that is exactly what's happening. Let's just be honest. I was literally talking to Dr. Roy Korth about this the other day. Uh, I went up to meet with him. Monica and I had real, an experimental stem cell procedure. I'm literally wearing his, uh, NAD patch right now. Uh, you know, NAD, we could even talk about that. That's becoming big now, you know, the cellular energy stuff. They're, they're getting much better delivery systems and all that, but I don't want to rabbit hole, but th very important what you just said. Very important. And that is the entire trans movement is literally just a lack of circulating testosterone or, or the opposite where women have too much circulating testosterone and not enough estrogen and bro you know this i mean this is just basic biology and um you know and molecular dynamics to somebody like you and i but i always tell people this like the only difference between male and female xy and xx chromosomes be besides what the nonsense is going on about oh that's not true that there's more than genders and male and female that's a lie the only difference is literally the amount of testosterone in the zygotes or in the womb that the zygote experiences in utero. That is it. There is nothing else. More testosterone creates a male XY chromosome and less creates a female. There is nothing beyond that. You can debate that. You can argue that be retarded as much as you want. You cannot refute that. And so what is happening exactly as you say, is that there is a giant contamination in utero from the chemicals, from the EDCs, from the phthalates, from literally everything, from blue light now, from women's growth, I mean, uh, uh, birth control pills, you know, to uh, the things they stick inside them to prevent, you know, uh, fertility. I mean, all of these things have basically washed off into the global water supply. And so the last 30 years, men have been born and women broken. And when I say broken, biologically broken, biologically broken. And they think because the dark side, the sons of Belial, if that's what we want to call them, the parasitic energies have, are encouraging this non divine realm of teaching people that there aren't polar energies of divine masculine, and divine feminine, and that there's all this mixture and, you know, it's okay. And you, you and I both know it, it is satanic. It's satanic because the, sat the satanic beings are wanting to feed off of the negative fear-based victimhood energy. That's how they live. That's how they, that's how they get sustenance. And, and, and we don't have to go that deep and freak people out. It's not for here. It's not a public conversation. We can just go that far, but that's what it is. And so now young men and women literally, as you said, go and either castrate themselves or have a surgical procedure. It's supported by society. It's supported by the dark energy of medicine, you know, allopathic demonic energy, uh, medicine. And I know not everyone in allopathic is demonic, but, you know, obviously the, the upholding principles and the government and the authority and the control structure is at this point. But it's like, dude, it's, I mean, it's all insane, but it literally just goes back to that basic premise that there's a lack of circulating testosterone in males and too much in women. And it's all been the derangement of the environment. And it's happening, bro. It's why they don't send people off into wars anymore to chop them up. 
why do that when you can just literally kill them by de decimating their endocrine systems or decimating their, their central nervous systems, making them fat, sick, and dependent on big pharma medicines and big agri foods? There's no need to kill them. They're, they're longer, more compliant, more servile slaves with no power. It, it's the best way to increase operant conditioning is to lower testosterone and increase serotonin. It's like, exactly. it's the old, it's, it, and yeah, look, but, I mean, I'm only 30, but when I was growing up, the, the, the people who would tell someone don't chop your dick off, those were the heroes. So I'm going to continue campaigning yeah, for people course, not chopping their yeah. dicks off. I'm huge on that. Very, very passionate about it. And, but the thing that, the thing that I, I feel very strongly about is that if, if people go and read the, the book that Jay mentioned before, Anthony Jay's book, uh, Estrogeneration, if you read that and embody that and understand that, there is no, it, it would, it would be more surprising. There it is right there. Fantastic book. It, it would be more surprising if these boys were growing up and actually identifying as men because right. they're so bombarded with these estrogen. It makes complete sense. Like yes. it, internally, like hormonally, you know, if, if this is what an androgenic male at 18 is supposed to be, and this is what a female is, then yeah, the hormone profile is about in the fucking middle. Yeah. If you, and if you ran the blood test on it, you'd see it. But the thing that would make more sense if this was actually an ethical thing and people actually had people's best interest at heart, like me and Jay do, when we talk about just questioning the, the, the status quo on this is yeah. going, Hey, okay. If, if you're sick and, and, and your, your hormones are off and you're unwell, before we cross to the other side, why don't we just try to optimize your biological hormones first? And then the counter argument to that is that it, well, it's all about how you feel and how you identify. No, it's not. Like th there's, there's a point where it's like, no, it's not. Like I wanted to get tattooed when I was 16 years old. And my parents were like, no. And I was like, at the time I was upset. I was angry. God bless your parents, bro. I am. If I got tattooed when I was 16, I'd, it'd be ridiculous. And this is the thing that these people need to understand. It's like, it's sometimes, and a lot of the time, and, and I, I don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I would not let an alcoholic tell me about healthy drinking patterns. And I would right. not let someone who's confused about their gender tell me how gender works. Like it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I have so, so, so much compassion for these people because I, I grew up with low testosterone. I understand that. But when I looked at the problem, I went, oh, I don't feel like a man, but the solution is not to cut my dick off. It's to up my testosterone and become a man. And that was a two-part process. One, fixing the hormones, and two, actually doing the fucking work. And the work was hard, but my body and mind actually responded properly because I had the right androgenic environment that I fixed. And I could undo a whole development worth of trauma. And on that side of the equation, you actually heal the problem. The suffering ends and you get to actually heal. And then maybe even do what I do and what Jay do, which is work to heal others and get purpose in doing that. But if, if, you, if you mutilate yourself and, and, and transfer your gender, one, we don't know what this is going to do over time. Two, it's probably going to cause cancer. Three, you, you have to go on all kinds of psychiatric medications. And four, as far as I'm aware in Australia, they're putting, they're putting people who transition into men on Reandrin every 14 weeks. So you're going to be insane, a hypergonadal bro. man. You're not even going to be a G. No. So like, imagine transitioning into a dude and get, becoming a hypergonadal dude. Like, horrific. It's insane, dude. I mean, all of it is satanic. You already said it. It's satanic. We, we are being moved and we can, I want to talk about alcohol and then we can summarize and wrap this up by mm. talking about where this is going and what you and I will give people as solutions to be ready, right? Because the solution is to be ready. There is no, the golden age is coming. You know, I like to say that, right? But the golden age is a, is a state of consciousness. It's not a world. It's a state of consciousness. We are living in the golden age right now because you and I are creating at a geometric rate because we place our consciousness in a place of abundance and prosperity. And everyone watching this show right now can do the same fucking thing. You don't have to wake up every morning and clock into the news and read Twitter or read, you know, social media. You know, I don't even like to say the names, IG, TikTok. And, 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 and contribute to the collective dissonance and incoherence, you can absolutely be abundant and you can be prosper, full of prosperity and coherence by placing your consciousness there. And that's what the golden age is. But I do want to talk about alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday, and this is probably the most important thing that you and I can talk about because in the last three years, I saw a stat the other day, in the last three years, alcoholism has 10 x on this planet, bro. 10 next. 
Now, let's just give a history of alcohol. The word alcohol, which is literally an Arabic uh, etymological root, root word, which is alcohol, literally means spirits. Now, it doesn't mean angels. <laughs> when you look up the word spirit, al cool again, the Arabic uh, derivative of it, it literally means dark spirits. Now, you talked about what you, when you were in a DJ in a club and you were sober and you watched alcoholic people and you saw their behaviors. I could take it even deeper. Now, I had amazing mentors in my life and I'm very grateful for them. And some of them do not ever want me to name them um, some of them are past, but one of them taught me a very profound and, and important lesson about alcoholics and alcoholism and what is really going on. Now, this is not woo. This is literally scientific and anyone can see this and prove this. If you want to go to a pub or a bar or any place in the world that has like a happy hour, and you want to just check out, and by the way, all you have to do is have a Curlian camera, okay, that can take a Curlian photography image. And, you know, they're out there. You can even get an infrared binoculars if you want for $3,000. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to wear it in a pub where people are going to be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? But you literally can go to these places and you can, with again, with either a, a camera that can take Curlian photography or a infrared spectrum binoculars. And there's other things that you can use now too. And bro... Be, be 45 minutes to an hour before happy hour you can like place the vision or you know the the oscillatory aspect of what you're looking at above the bar or the happy hour place it's usually a bar and you literally can see fourth dimensional transdimensional what, what you can even call them um you know what is it um um shit, my brain is melting right now what, what, uh, when people journey out of body they go into that place i can't think of what it's called right now but you can literally see energies that are not of this space and time and then when the people get there and they start drinking what do you think happens they become portals to these energies the astral the astral plane that's what i was trying to say and so people who are drunk bro are literally siphoning Call them demonic and they don't even have to be demonic. They can just be like, you know, negative disembodied spirits or entities or energies into their fields where they now are being controlled, puppeted, maneuvered, navigated, whatever you want to call them by literally disembodied, dark, parasitic energies. And bro, this is what happens to people. I mean, again, I've never, ever shared this at this level in a public podcast before. So thank you for bringing this out of me. But this is really what is happening to people who are drunk. They are not under the control of themselves. Their higher self has been replaced. Let's be honest. The higher self is what governs all of us in our day-to-day -day lives from death. Yes, the ego keeps us in survival programming and makes us maneuver in these physical bodies, but the higher self is your guidance system, your intuition. Your higher self is literally pushed out when you're wasted. And you are now under the influence of, let's just call them demons. You know, that's the easiest people for people to understand, but disincarnated energies and entities. And they do not have your best interest at heart. And so that's what these people do, bro, that get drunk. And then let's just go deeper. Regular alcoholics, al alcoholics, people who are chronic day drinkers, night drinkers, you know, w waking drunks, whatever you want to call them, walking drunks, alcoholics have permanent energetic attachments in them that control them and control their urges and make them do the things that they do. Now, now to give a historical perspective of alcoholism, to go back into the 20s and 30s, and I know you know this, they, they literally, again, medicine, they, there was no cure for alcoholism. This was literally something where like, we can't do anything about it because they didn't have a battle plan against demons that were controlling the psyches and the energetic fields of people who were alcoholics. Again, higher self is being displaced, energetic entity, demon, whatever you want to call it, discarnated spirit is replacing your quote unquote energy and controlling you. 
Now, it wasn't until they created AA, which, by the way, I have a whole thing I could go on and off about AA because AA doesn't really do shit except enforce that a person is a drunk loser. <laughs> you know, I'm always an alcoholic and I will always be an alcoholic and I'm a drunk. And, you know, it's like they never, ever actually transcend it. Right. So it does have some benefit to it, but most of it is nonsense. But at the end of the day, thankfully, that came. Bill Wilson created AA and it was like a resource for people to find help. But bro, at the end of the day, dude, alcoholism is what keeps people from ever becoming successful, from ever loving and trusting themselves. Yesterday on the Front Row podcast, the guy asked me point blank. He was like, look, you're 52, you're 53, you have an amazing physique. You know, you keep your body fat 10% or below year round. You know, is it peptides? Is it therapeutic testosterone? Is it growth hormone? You know, is it the things that you do from a fitness standpoint, you know, is it a combination of all those things? And I literally, cause he asked me some very pointed questions and he's, he wanted like percentages. Like, what is it? What is this giving you the ability to look like you do? And I literally looked him point blank in the eye and I said, bro, all those things help. But at the end of the day, I don't drink a sip, a fucking drop of alcohol and 90% of the population does. And no f- two glasses of wine every other day, or a couple of beers with the bros on the weekend when we're watching the game or the soccer match or whatever it is. I don't do any of that. I drink water, Icelandic water to be in fact, as people know, when they watch these things, the best water on earth, it's the last non-poisoned water, you know, and yes, I do put electrolytes in it. Sometimes I put caffeine, not much, but sometimes this is just electrolytes, you know, that's all discussed in the newest book coming out, but bro, like, Let's just straight up tell people the truth. You will not ever attain physiological victory, mastery of your physique until you stop drinking alcohol. And I don't give a shit how angry this is going to piss people off because you and I know it's going to piss people off. And some people are going to come at us and say, but come on, Jay, you always even say yourself everything in moderation except alcohol. Alcohol is a cell toxin. It is a poison. It does no good, bro. As I was saying in the early part of the show, remember the most inflammatory substance that we know of is literally visceral body fat. It's more inflammatory than kerosene. What causes visceral body fat deposition? Alcohol. If you look at the biochemical cascade of converting alcohol to triglycerol, which then becomes triglyceride, which is estrogenic slash visceral body fat. It's what leads to death and disease. Because again, when you have visceral body fat around the internal organs, which is primarily caused by an inability of the body to deaminate alcohol because people are over consuming it. This is what literally leads to almost all of the diseases of aging. Yes, too much sugar, too much refined food doesn't help. But the body can break down protein, carbohydrates, and fat over time. And some of us break them down better than others, you know, genetically, naturally selection, you know, our epigenetic habits and traits, but it can't break down alcohol. And alcohol is literally legal. It's publicized. It's, it's advertised. It's promoted as comfort food and the drinking and, you know, party lifestyle and you got to drink alcohol when you go to the football game or when you're with your families watching TV. I mean, bro, we have got to, you know, this is like a social statement you and I are making right now, but like people have got to get to a place of saying no and no one glass of wine a night is not good. It, it, it's not, it's just fucking not if, if anyone wants to, because I'm very b- big on this idea that men learn from experience, right? So if anyone's sitting here being like, maybe Jay and Dave are full of shit, maybe not. If you're someone who drinks like kind of what Jay mentioned, like, you know, maybe you're drinking a few times a week or, you know, here and there, maybe you're drinking a little bit more than you know that you should, but you think you're, you're getting away with it. Right. Go on to Amazon or iHerb and buy a, a product called Now Foods Liver Refresh. It's like a kitchen <laughs> sink. Uh, liver support product that's made with like milk thistle glutathione and everything good in there it's a budget product it's cheap take that for a month and you'll go oh fuck okay this is what happens when my liver feels better so 
there was a period a while back. I'm I'm very big on treating liver disease, particularly uh, alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And one thing that I think is fascinating, and this is from my time in plant medicine, I'm so glad we're talking about this stuff because this stuff. I'm like Jay's the one who'll appreciate this more than anyone else. So there are there are multiple tribes in the world who have never been able to communicate or spoken to each other who believe that human consciousness resides in the liver. Right. Now. I don't sit here and go, yep, yeah, because I, I believe that consciousness comes from every cell in the body. But the reason why they believe that was because the liver's health so strongly impacts your consciousness and how right. you feel because it is right. the main detoxifying organ. That's right. So I, I, a little while back, I made a whole liver masterclass on YouTube, which people can watch for free because I'm very passionate about getting this idea out. And one of the most important things is that you have to have a healthy liver, especially if you're on testosterone because your, your, testosterone, your liver – now has to metabolize the testosterone as well. So your liver must be tip top. And one of the things that I've found that's the most effective for both TRT side effects and general, because I, I think it's fantastic when when Jay comes out and, and, and makes this information that people need to be aware of, which is that this systemic inflammation is ruining your quality of life, we'll, we'll put it, in, in all ways, your, your longevity, your subjective experience, your consciousness, your everything. So what we have to do is sit there and go, okay, if I'm like, if I've got eight or 12 or 16 weeks or, you know, I'm going to do Jay's you know, new 30 day shreds challenge. What can I do now to help me feel better in the moment as like a band aid so that I can do all this shit that I need to work on. And liver support is an amazing thing. Like I know I'm, I'm pretty sure Jay, I've read an article where you wrote, where you talked about even high dose and Acatel cysteine is phenomenal for people's mental health. Um, because of the effect on balancing glutamate and, um, sorry, the, the GABA glutamate balance and the oxidative stress in the brain. So alcohol is something where people need to realize that the recreational dose and the toxic dose are way closer together than any other drug. So if you're drinking enough booze to get a buzz on, you're causing systemic damage to your body. Um, and that's the harm of alcohol is that you're causing a lot of, like you're, you're really teetering at alcohol toxicity when people get intoxicated. And that's why people drink to the point that they pass out, they cross that line. So the thing that I found very interesting with alcohol is, and I'm sure Jay is the same as well. One of, one of the most fascinating things, and, and you know, Jay was referencing about science before, is like, you can show me all the studies you want that say the sky is green, but if you've never been outside, it doesn't fucking matter if I'm like, bro, I just went outside, it's blue. I go outside every day, it's blue. I don't care what your study says, the sky fucking blue. You can argue that the studies say that it's green, but all studies are are tools to help us explain the real world. Right. So if the real world contradicts it, the study doesn't mean shit. It's exactly. a tool. And it becomes redundant in those cases. So, and then, you know, it's a lot of the time when you actually dissect and read a study and go into it, you're like, this doesn't prove anything. This is a no. load of crap. Yeah. Um, you know, they say uh, curcumin helps with prostate cancer because they injected a whole bunch of curcumin directly into the prostate. And they were like, oh, it disrupted the cell growth. It's like anything will disrupt the cell growth if you inject it directly into the fucking prostate. So, when it comes to the studies and all this stuff, people need to take a step back. And the, the most important thing people can do with any vice is go, if you think you're getting away with it, cut it out for 90 days and see if you feel better. Because it, you probably you probably can't see the forest from the trees. And that's the biggest thing that people need to be aware of. And, and the biggest problem with alcohol is that one, as Jay said, it's not just legalized, it's glamorized and it's fucking everywhere. But two... It, it lowers your consciousness. So when you look at like psychedelics as drugs, like cannabis, psilocybin mushrooms, LSD, ayahuasca, DMT, these are things that increase your consciousness. They're not, they're not things that actually dull you. So alcohol is a dulling, inhibiting disassociative. Um, it's a downer. Um, and the impact of the GABA going up can give you a bit of a buzz, which is dopaminergic. But generally that buzz is just coming from caffeine or sugar, which is with the alcohol you're consuming. Um, and it, it's something which over time is, is it, it can definitely cause ongoing issues. I've seen this before. We, we, we run, um, it's a real shame in the States. Gamma GT is not like a standard liver test that I've yeah. seen in Australia. Yeah. GGT is on every liver panel. So we see it all the time. And what I see a lot of the time with guys is they'll go out and binge drink on Friday, Saturday night, <laughs> and they run their blood work the following Thursday, Friday, and their GGT is still jacked. So their liver is still actively toxic. And then. Someone who's not aware of this shit would go, oh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. But someone like you and I is going, that means that they're inflamed all Fuck. week. This is causing systemic inflammation. It's like, and then they're like, oh, but all my mates get away with it. It's like, yeah, but they're not you. Exceptions don't disprove the rule. 
So it's really important that people take a step back with the alcohol and go, this is probably a net negative. And if you are someone like, I, I, I spoke to a gentleman recently and I'm very anti-alcohol, but this gentleman said, he said, every Friday night, my wife and I share a cheese board and a bottle of red wine and talk about our week. And I was like, never stop doing that. Like that's never stop doing that ritual. That's bonding. That's the, the benefits of that offset the effects of the alcohol in my opinion. Like that's, but for God's sake, take some liver support with it so that your body can handle it. And if it's, if it's something that's so important to you and you absolutely love it, then you have to take liver support every day to support your body with that but you are so much better off finding ways to connect and bond that increase your consciousness, not decrease and dull your consciousness. And they don't have to be intoxicants and drugs. They can be things like breath work and meditation and prayer right. and talking and all these different things. Because a lot of the time when, we, when we're looking at biohacking, we're looking at tools and we're looking at catalysts that we can make, but we shouldn't look at what we can take. We can look at what should we do. Like right. if you have something that you can do, do that first and look to take something on top. So Alcohol is something, as as Jay said before, it is it is a net negative. It is extremely harmful, and the the negative effects of it are downplayed. And I don't think we're ever going to see in the research just how harmful it is to human health because they're just not going to look at that in the clinical setting that we'd actually be able to get that data from. But people who work in this space, I don't know anyone who works in this space and does what we do who drinks. No, that's pretty telling. No. No, there isn't. We I mean, see it in the blood work. I mean, look, man, I want to put your stuff up real quick here because this has been such an amazing show. Um, look, man, you just can't you can't go where you ultimately desire to go if truly you are a mission driven, purpose driven human being by drinking alcohol. Now, I'm not judging you if you were in your teens and your early 20s and you drank. Everybody did. I mean, I was lucky enough that I never did. And then when I did do it one time and I blacked out, I was like what the fuck is this? I can never do this again. Right. I mean, I literally vomited and shit myself and my good friend had to take my clothes off and stuff and like literally put me into bed and I lost an entire day of my life. And I was like, I will never do this again. Right. So like I tell people I got drunk and literally blacked out. And honestly, dude, like I was literally at a senior year of high school, um, not a reunion, but I went back to see my guys I hadn't seen in five years. Cause I, my dad moved me and they were just giving me glasses of vodka and tonic. And I was just, Ugh. You know, I'd never been drunk in my life. And so, I mean, I was literally destroyed. But at the end of the day, there's no reason to do it. It doesn't help you. I mean, look, you know, again, and this is not condemnation or judgmental, but it goes back to what we said. If you drink, you do it because you don't love and trust yourself. And it is literally something to keep you away from the truth, which is that reality that you don't love and trust yourself. And so it's an escapism tool to not be who you're afraid to be because you just don't truly love yourself. And again, dude, I want people to understand, I did not love and trust myself until I was 44 years old, period. I'm 52 now. And it's been a absolute uphill grind quote unquote, if I want to classify it as a struggle, it's been the greatest gift for me to be able to observe when I didn't love and trust myself. And to see that it was this amazing gift because now I can look back on it and say, well, wow, you know how that benefited me to be who I am now today. But every single one of us, if there's a lesson in this podcast, has been not loving and trusting themselves at various incarnations as physical beings. And how many times you've been back here, who knows, most of us many times. But it's like, it's okay to be that person right now if you're watching this podcast and saying, fuck, I've never even thought about what they're talking about. Like, you know, with the Paul Check statement, like, you know, if you don't have a purpose, right? Like, I mean, that's another part of my conversations with guys. Like, okay, you do love and trust yourself. Well, what is your purpose? Oh, you know, my job, my, my kids, my wife, you know, nope. you know again, it, people don't ask these kind of questions, but it's like when you truly love and trust yourself, and again, if you're not there yet, it's fine. Make a decision, right? As the great Neville Goddard says, imagine your life is the wish fulfilled. Change your words, change your thoughts. You can create that reality right now in an instant, right? Perception, okay? And it's there. You're living it as it is. But the reality is it doesn't matter if you don't love and trust yourself right now. Begin to start thinking about how you can and, and, and take action right now on how that comes about. And again, it's literally as simple as a thought. 
Dave said it, affirmations are huge. Sitting in nature uninterrupted every day of your life, even if it's for five or 10 minutes. And, you know, people will come out of us, Dave, and say, oh, I live in New York City, bro. You know, I don't have nature. I don't have grass. I don't have trees. That's not true. They're even there. If you're in New York City or, you know, a cosmopolitan place in Aussieville or Canada or wherever, literally go and hold a tree or stand under a tree and put your hand on the tree. I'm not kidding you. But connect with nature Again, sit in silence, you know, read spiritual books, learn to about affirmations. I mean, all of these things can start you on the path to loving and trusting yourself. But until you attempt and focus on actually doing those things, like you, I like your comment about saying, like, I'm going to make this statement, I'm going to fast until tomorrow. And then literally you start eating chips six hours later, right? So, I mean, like you have the ability, you are the ultimate creator of your reality. You are the controller of your story, the writer of your destiny. So start right now in this moment. If you do not find yourself right now in a place that you desire, if you do not feel like you do have a mission or you don't love and trust yourself, change that, change that story, change that mindset right now, change your thoughts, change your life. It's literally that simple. 100%. I'll just make some closing points on that because this is, this has become my favorite area to talk about. And if anyone wants to hear more on this, just check out the YouTube videos that that your, your, uh, your brain on testosterone, because this stuff, the stuff that Jay and I are talking about now, this was the stuff that I found that people needed to work on when your blood works dialed in, but they didn't feel the way they wanted to feel. This was the bit that was missing. And that, that was the part that was, it was so obvious to me in terms of being like biologically, everything's dialed in, but they're like, I don't feel like a man, I don't feel the way I want to feel yet. And it was because they, 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 it's exactly what Jay said. They, they didn't love and trust themselves. Or as I would say, they weren't proud of themselves. Um, and you have to do things to be proud of, to be proud of yourself. You Like I am genuinely proud of myself now. I used to think I was proud of myself when I was younger, but at the end of the day, I knew that I was still underperforming. Like I, when you, when you spend time in flow state, working towards something that makes the world a better place that's connected with your purpose. And you do things regularly that you've mastered that you're good at, and you have good positive relationships with people and and you, you give love and you receive love. These things are, uh, these are the things that give you the quality of life that you're looking from the biohacks. This is what people are looking for in a pill and you don't get it. Um, you, you have to work for it and you have to earn it. And the, the, the spending time in nature and being at peace is so important. And I think that the first part, the, the first step to put all this into action, because I'm very big on being like, what, what do we actually do now? Like, okay, we get it. Like we get it guys. Like, okay, cool. How do we do it? The first thing is you have to learn how to meditate because if you can't meditate, it means that you can't focus your mind. And if you can't focus your mind, you have no free will. You have to create a gap between the stimulus and the response because that's when you get to exert your free will on what you want to do. Otherwise, you just react to your feelings all the time and then you're just a leaf in the wind and you're fucked. Um, so you have to be able you have to be able to break that default mode network, which you know, as, as you know, when we look at particular psychedelics like 5 meo DMT, these are pharmacological ways to break that default mode network to make it so strong. But you can learn to do it yourself through mindfulness. So that's the first step. And then I like to tell guys, I go, look, um, imagine what the best version of you is possible. Like, what does he do? What does he look like? Where does he live? What does he wear? How does he speak? What's his career? All of those things. And then look at where you are and then look at what little incremental things you can do to become more like this guy and less like who you are now. And the first step is usually dropping all the self-destructive shit that this guy wouldn't have time for because he's gotten to where he needs to be because it doesn't matter how old you are. There's a point that you have to get to in your, in your maturity where you realize that the self-destructive shit is holding you back from being the person that you could be. And the longer you leave that, the more guilty you're going to be and the harder it's going to be to cover that ground back. So if you're off track, it's as simple as making the decision to go, I'm going to get myself back on track. And step one is I'm going to learn how to exert my free will. Step two is I'm going to be accountable to myself and actually trust myself. And then I'm going to do things that make me proud, that make the world a better place because I was in it. And it will be a better place when I leave because I was here. And then you will have to love yourself for that because then you are undisputably worthy of love. So I think that's, that's the, that's the, that's the cure. That's the path that people need to take. And I think the, 
exciting thing about you know what what we speak about and what we spoke about today and what you've done so much of your work on is helping guys understand logically why they feel like they're broken but it's not because they're defective it's just because they didn't know how to drive the car for a while and then now it just needs a service and it's like this fuck all the other bullshit that's all crap that's all nonsense just gonna snake oil and bleed you dry this is how you do it and to the point that you're like, I'll give you this for free if you can't afford it. Here's the tool to fix yourself. And that's how people like us go to bed at night with a peaceful, still mind because we go, we made the world a better place today. Bro, that was profound. Literally profound, man. And you know, it's time to end the podcast when my rat dog starts barking in the background. <laughs> he doesn't ever bark. So it's like, what is he barking at? My wife just texted me. She's like, there's a guy out there. It's okay. I know who it is. <laughs> Bro, I don't know what really else to say other than to say I appreciate you. I love you. I'm very grateful to have you call you as a friend, a very close friend. I can't wait to see you. You're going to be here in November. We'll talk off air in a second. But um, so, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, this was an hour and 48 minute podcast. I think this is the record. I think Paul, Paul and I did about an hour and 37. So you just broke Paul's record. Uh, but I mean, truly a profound podcast. So you guys can find Dave at advancedfundamentalhealth.com. Definitely follow him on I am Dave Lee on IG. He's literally, and you already know this, one of the only internet social media accounts that I actually read. Um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, dude, you already know. I mean, again, the signal to noise ratio on on the internet is insane. And as you know, like people like us who are smart, if we read it and we want to help someone, all we end up doing is get sucked into a dissonant vortex that actually you can't help anyone because once you're sucked into the energy field, you're literally dropping your vibration. So you're right. All you can do is create, put out resonant information. It serves those who it finds and in the right place at the right time. And for those that doesn't, they can say whatever they want, you know? And that's why people get mad at me a lot. I think on the internet, because I don't read comments and comment and look, man, I think, you know, this, I do have a team, but my team isn't commenting because I don't want them to. If you, and you know this too, if you are a resonant human, you know how to find us. You can literally get to us. But by leaving comments on Instagram or TikTok, I don't even go on TikTok, be, be honest. My team does post on TikTok. But uh, uh, by leaving comments and then complaining when we don't respond to them, that's your problem. That's not our problem. We have lives. We're creating. We are not consuming. We didn't even talk about that. We're creating, we're not consuming. So that's cool, but you can get a hold of us. And so, you know, don't go after us by leaving comments. Connect with us through our websites. Go to our contact pages. You'll get to us. We're not that hidden, right? But it's laughing. It's, it's funny because like that's the biggest thing now I see on social media is like the people attacking. They don't respond to their comments. They don't care about us. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of stuff. It's literally laughable. But in, in, in truth, like the people that are, you know, quote unquote, deserving of, of this resonant message, this information, they will find us and they will connect with us and we will serve one another. And the people that aren't ready yet, that's fine. You're where you're at, but you know, you'll eventually get there and maybe you won't, maybe you don't find Dave and I, you know, interesting. I think you and I, either people love us, bro, or they hate us. There's no in between with us. I have definitely found that there is a polarizing reception to what we have to say. hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome, man. All right. So I am Dave Lee advanced fundamental health.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Guys, we'll see you guys very soon. Thank you.